From the foods we eat to our clothes, furniture, and automobiles, chemicals play a large role in our lives. Chemical engineers convert scientific discoveries into marketable products. Chemical engineers are involved in many aspects of chemical production, research, and design, as well as in the construction and operation of industrial plants. They conduct research to develop new manufacturing processes, analyze operating procedures, equipment, and machinery functions, and make recommendations for reducing processing time and cost. Frequently, chemical engineers specialize in one area, such as food, pharmaceuticals, petrochemicals, or consumer products such as plastics, detergents, paint, and synthetic textiles. Other chemical engineers who have knowledge and experience in both the scientific and production aspects of the work may be employed as administrators, project directors, sales engineers, or technical consultants. Chemical engineers usually have a bachelor's degree, but those working in research often have a master's or PhD. As chemical and manufacturing companies develop new products and more efficient processes, they will continue to need chemical engineers to implement their plans. Okay, now I'm going to introduce Steve Johnson to discuss the importance of electrochemical engineering in the development and process of nitinol wire in the medical industry. My name is Steve Johnson. I work here at Memory Corporation where we process nitinol wire for use in the medical industry. Um, I'm here to discuss the importance of our chemical processes in the uh, cleaning, shaping, and passivation of the wire. So the first thing I'd like to do is to show you how the wire comes into the lab after it is formed in the salt pot. We'll discuss how the oxide is removed in the first step of our process. Normally the first step that we do is to remove the oxide layer that's built up on the wire. As you can see here, it has a dark oxide coating on it that needs to be removed. This is your typical stent wire that will go into our patients to help alleviate any kind of blockages in your major arteries. So the first thing that we would do is we're going to mount the wire on fixtures that are designed to minimize contact points. The wire then goes into our, our acid etching station, which is a mixture of strong acids. Uh, typically we try to remove all the oxide in a certain amount of diameter uh, to hit our target thickness that we're looking for from uh, customer specifications. So after the wire is etched, you can see that most of the oxide is then removed. This preps the wire for our next step, which is going to be the electro-polishing solution. What happens in the EP solution is that you have your, you have your wire mounted on a fixture. Um, what happens in electroplating is you're actually putting metal onto a part. This is the absolute opposite. Uh, electro-polishing, we're actually going to remove metal from the surface. And what this does is it gets rid of any burrs or any kind of deformities in the wire. And what you're left with is a very smooth, very shiny surface um, that, you know, everything gets 100% inspected to make sure that there are no deformities or any kind of uh, variations that would lead us to reject the wire. So it's a, it's a very critical inspection since these parts are going inside of a patient in the end. So the next step is the electro-polishing solution. What happens is you take your wire with your part on it, you attach it to a clip, and then you fix it to the anode. Now what we do is we've done a lot of investigation on what kind of current densities, what kind of voltages, how much current we actually want to run through this wire, and for how long we want to do that. So what we do is we calculate our total coulombs that we want, and that gets calculated into amp minutes. And um, so the part will get processed, it'll get polished, then it gets cleaned, um, then we measure it to make sure we hit our target diameters inspect it to make sure that there are no abnormalities that could cause a problem in the future. So what happens after that is you get a part that comes out of the polishing solution. As you can see in comparison to when it comes in, it has a very shiny finish to it. 
Uh, it should be free of any burrs or defects. And now the part is ready to be passivated. And passivation is probably the most important step in our process because what that does is it forms a protective oxide layer that will make the part corrosion resistant when it's actually inside the human body. Uh, the human body naturally has a pH of 7.4, so what we'll do is we have a phosphate buffer solution um, that we keep at a pH of 7.4, and we'll let the parts sit in that for up to months to years, and we do uh, very thorough corrosion studies on this. So the, typically in this industry, what you have is different variations of nitric acid concentration, and the nitinol part has to stay in the nitric acid for a minimum of 30 minutes. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to remove the nickel from the nickel titanium alloy. Um, basically removes all the nickel from the surface because nickel is toxic to humans. So what we want to do is remove that nickel oxide and replace it with a titanium dioxide layer which is very corrosion resistant and chemically resistant and it's safe to be uh, inserted into the human body. Um, that basically is what goes on in an electro polishing lab. Uh, there's a lot of time and effort to go in to make sure that we get everything right before our parts go into production. And the value of safety is uh, our main concern because in the end, our product does go into another human being. So that's the essential uh, quick tour of an electro polishing room and how electrochemical engineering plays an important part in the medical industry. Thank you, Steve.